Listen to Vya for this one-of-a-kind grand gathering. We are extremely excited to have Sri Piyush Goyal ji, Honorable Minister for Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution and Textiles as our chief guest for the occasion. We extend a very warm welcome to you, sir. We are also thankful to Sri Vipul Bansal ji, Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce, to take the time to join us for the inauguration of ECGC Bhavan, the new corporate office of ECGC Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, हमारे देश में एक बहुत ही खूबसूरत प्रथा है कि जब भी हम कोई नया कार्य शुरू करते हैं, तो उसका शुभारंभ करने के लिए हम दीपक की ज्योत जलाते हैं। So ladies and gentlemen, I'll be inviting the dignitaries for the lamp lighting ceremony. I request Shri Piyush Goyal ji, Shri Vipul Bansal ji, Shri M Senthil Nathan, Dr A Saktivel to please come forward for the lamp lighting ceremony. With this lamp lighting, we hope that our prayers reach the Almighty and the fire within us to be the best, to be the winner and to succeed always also burns very bright. much for this beautiful participation which marks a new and prosperous beginning for ECGC Bhavan. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a beautiful devotional performance in the form of Ganesh Vandana, a prayer to the God of supreme knowledge and wisdom to bless all of us present here. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the Ganesh Vandana now.
much for such a beautiful rendition of the Ganesh Vandana. Ladies and gentlemen, now that we are at this beautiful bhavan, I would like to share some beautiful insights about the ECGC bhavan. Ladies and gentlemen, during the conceptualization phase, it was decided to break the shackles and create not just a functional commercial structure, but also a timeless piece of art. A sculpture that redefines government buildings, a symbol of not just modern architecture, but of rapidly developing modern India. The project, ladies and gentlemen, is a seamless flow from public to semi-public to ultimately private spaces with the incorporation of parametric design. The aim was to develop an ultra-modern, iconic office structure with a perfect amalgamation of socio-economic needs with a very futuristic approach, also creating a green, environment-friendly, energy-efficient building. Ladies and gentlemen, the core motivation behind the ECGC Bhavan is reduce, reuse, and replenish. In this direction, we have the sensor-based LED lighting system and a very vast skylight dome to reduce consumption. The skylight feature provides natural light inside the offices and the intelligent facade glass resists heat. The terrace gardens keep the environment more oxygenated. Solar power generation system for reducing dependence on grid electricity. We also have extensive rainwater harvesting system for replenishing the grown water level. Ladies and gentlemen, also let me tell you that the ECGC Bhavan campus is spread over an area of 4.85 acres with a total construction area of the office building spread over 65,000 square feet. The design caters for visually connectivity of green spaces flowing through the commercial to the residential sector. The process of the construction of the residential is expected to begin shortly. And with that, me, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be commencing the proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, I would like to request the dignitaries to join us on stage. Please help me in uh, welcoming Sri Piyush Goyalji, Sri Vipul Bansalji. Shri M. Senthil Nathanji, Dr. A. Sakti Vail, to please come forward. Very, very warm welcome. And thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Ladies and gentlemen, to begin the formal proceedings of the day, may I now request Sri M. Senthil Nathan, CMD, ECGC, to welcome the guests. Thank you so much, sir. With that, may I request? Yes. Yes. You would like to? Yes. Welcome the guest. Yes. yes. Please present, sir. Yes. Let's have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, as so welcome our guests. so much sir for welcoming our guest and facilitating them with that may i request shri m sentil nathan sir cmd ecgc to please come to the dais and address this august gathering and welcome our guest and share experiences and future plans with all of us let's give a warm welcome to him please Thanks, sir. good afternoon ladies and gentlemen it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to this grand inauguration of this corporate office of the company. It is one of the most important landmarks in the 65 years of the company's existence and we are truly honored and overwhelmed to have all our well-wishers here for this historic day. Firstly, I would like to thank our Honorable Commerce and Industry Minister Sri Piyush Goelji for gracing this occasion and taking the time out of his busy schedule. I would also like to thank Joint Secretary from Department of Commerce, Sri Vipul Bansal, for his uh, August presence, and I, and also Dr. Sak A. Saktiwal for taking time out of his busy schedule and coming here, especially for this program, uh, realigning his schedule in Dubai. Thank you very much, sir. We are honored. We are uh, truly honored to have all of you in the with us during this moment of occasion. I and my colleagues are truly grateful that we have all of you here to share this wonderful moment with us. The Government of India established Export Risk Insurance Corporation, presently known as ECGC Limited, in the year 1957 under the Companies Act to promote exports from the country by providing credit risk insurance services. In all its years of service, the company has grown from strength to strength 
and has set up network of 46 branch offices and four regional offices in the prominent export oriented locations of the country. Our Andheri office is the latest addition to this network. All this growth and support to export has been possible only with the unstinted support from Ministry of Commerce and Industry and Government of India. Our heartiest thanks for the Minister to have supported us without any hesitation and greatly. ECGC through its products and to exporters and banks play a vital role in enabling exporters to protect existing markets and to explore new markets by offering credit risk protection for the receivables. It also supports nearly 20% of exports from the country through various schemes and products. More than 85% of around 16,000 customers benefited by ECGC's covers are small-scale exporters, exporters with insurance limit of less than 40 crores and export credit working capital requirement of less than 80 crores. As you are aware, rising interest rates, soaring inflations have been troublesome for developed markets, but the situation is much worse for the developing nations. This means that even with all else being equal, as a credit underwriter, we need to play a counter-cyclical role in supporting Indian exports through these challenging times. And I can assure you, with the support of Government of India, we have been strengthened enough to play this role ably, and I can proudly confirm on behalf of my all colleagues that we are, we will need no stone unturned to play this role very effectively. India is a nation of great resourcefulness and diversity and its export potential is waiting to be tapped. In the last decade, exports have risen to historic levels and we also attained our target of reaching 400 billion exports. With the able guidance of the Ministry of Commerce and Government of India, this was made possible by each and every one of you and ECGC is truly delighted to have support of all the stakeholders in this achievement of this target. With renewed vigor and updated amenities, we wish to continue supporting the nation and help the fulfillment of the dream of 5 trillion economy and counting further. Once again, we extend our hearty welcome to all of you. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your kind words and for such a warm welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Sri Vipul Bansalji, Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce, to please address this August gathering. Warm welcome to you. Honorable Minister Shri Piyush Goyalji, CMD, ECGC Santhilathanji, Sakti Belji, all the exporters who have come, found time on a Sunday to come here. Thank you all, all the employees and their families if they are here. Uh, now, it's a very great event because this year itself in Delhi, we have moved into the new Vanijya Bhavan. And now ECGC in the same year is moving into this ECGC Bhavan. And uh, so there is a healthy competition amongst the two because our Vanijya Bhavan is very nice. And we hope that this building, as nice as it looks today, continues to be maintained in the same uh, way. Now, this, uh, I've had a chance to interact with the architect. It, it's got the environment uh, gold uh, uh, category. They are aiming for platinum category. I wish you all the best. I hope this is a this turns out to be the greenest building that we have here. And uh, the architect also told me that you are trying to get the international award for architects and some Chicago, which very prestigious awards. All the best to you. Uh, as for ECGC, I am very happy to say that as a member of the board, I am proud that the performance of ECGC has been very good over the last couple of years. The growth in premium has exceeded the total export credit that we have been, that the country has got. So as a result, our market share is improving. Our insurance coverage on our exports is improving. And uh, this is something that we have to keep striving for. Uh, today, ECGC is a well-capitalized company with higher than the required solvency ratio. Its leverage ratio is much lower than the industry standard. And it's in a good shape, and we hope that... Uh, it continues to, while maintaining its ratios, ex expand its reach and reach the corner most and the smallest exporter that we have in the country. So, over the next one year, there are ma major challenges ahead. One is to move into the state-of-the-art IT system. Uh, it's called SMILE. This is something that uh, I re should, it should happen over the next 365 days. The Gift City branch has been opened, but it has to be made operational, profitable, and 
we hope that it contributes ecgc in its own way contributes to globalization of our economy uh, the factoring business has started recently and all the best for that but it's it's still in initial stages and uh, we all hope and with the help of all the employees of ecgc the claim disposal ratio over the next one year reaches the all time high is something that i strive for so thank you so much and uh, god bless you all and happy holi thank you so much sir for sharing your valuable insights with us today ladies and gentlemen now please help me in welcoming president of fio dr a sakti bail ji let's have a huge round of applause for him please good evening ladies and gentlemen our godfather of our export industry honorable minister peace goel ji and the most active officer mr bansal the most successful and leading the eccc to the greater right mr sendil nadan i know him for last nearly 35 years he means business and it's today we are in this building because of his leadership mr sendil nadan friends as a fio president we have the most active and midas touch honorable minister with us when he fixed the target as a 400 billion we are all wondered how we are going to achieve this because our history says last 5 years only 300 billion we never crossed but with this active participation with the exporters and he made us to see not only 400 uh, billion we crossed 422 billion because of your midas touch sir <laughs> not only that when the next time the next year when he fixed the target about 460 470 billion the world well were wondering what the in geo situation everybody is doing 20 by percent minus what how india can do it but honorable minister has proved that yes we will do it and we will achieve it i am very confident in march we will have a manufacture export of 10% increase not only that with the service export increase of 35% we will cross 800 billion export in the march sir so it's all because of your uh, not only midas touch as i said you are our godfather of our industry you you really call us every 15 days and give encouragement i never seen any commerce ministers meets exporters so often that even day after tomorrow there is a vc so why i'm saying this whenever he fix the target he don't even sit idle he make sure that everybody is started working and this is the first time our abroad mission started working for the exporters there was a lot of missions i am in the field for 40 years but we go to the some buyer seller meet they will just say they come and go but actively all the missions are working because of our honorable ministers talking to them regularly not only vc with the exporters vc with the missions regularly so that's why the india's export is growing and this year will definitely achieve 800 billion yesterday i was in uh, dubai with the invitation of our uh, dubai uh, uae government there i his excellency mr abdullah bin tariq was appreciating openly in the meeting that indian commerce minister is so active and so fast we cannot follow his uh, uh, work because in 88 days he finished the sipa with the uh, uae not only that after the signing the sipa now our growth rate is more than 100 percent to the uae so sir we are really fortunate to have you as our uh, uh, commerce minister and we exporters feel so happy internationally that we have the leader who really guide us with this i wish the ecgc all the success because ecgc means is mostly for msme exporters we do they cover about 6 lakh crores but out of which 80% of the 
clients are uh, MSME. After our Honorable Minister's advice, now all small exporters will be covered 90% by the bank and about 2,000 exporters were benefited after your uh, advice to the ECGC, sir. It's, uh, you, you never talk about uh, big exporters. You always worried about the small exporters. We exporters, we feel that there is a protector for us for the MSME sector, that is yourself, sir. With this, I once again thank uh, ECGC for giving this opportunity. I wish all the best for the, the new building. Under the Sendil Nathan, definitely ECG will do well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your best wishes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, now to enlighten us with his vision in the form of his keynote address, please help me in welcoming, as it gives me immense pleasure, to invite our chief guest, our honorable minister, Sri Piyush Goyalji. Let's have a thunderous round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, madam. Our beloved chairman and managing director of ECGC, Mr. Senthil Nathan, somebody who's really earned the goodwill of the exporting community across the country. And a very soft-spoken, very sober person, but a hard taskmaster. My very dear friend and captain of India's exporting community, Mr. Saktivel, chairman of FIO. It may not sound like a mutual admiration society, but truly he brings so much enthusiasm to the table. Always bullish, always confident, proactive, and a man who has risen through his life, through very trying circumstances. And therefore, somebody who's very connected with the roots, somebody who's seen it all, the architect or creator of the Tirupur entire textile ecosystem, and somebody, I think, who's rightly leading FIO, also a director in ECGC for the third time? Third time. Thank you for your leadership of the export community and continued the same enthusiasm. I won't tell them your age because nobody can otherwise figure out your age. My colleague in the Commerce Ministry, Mr. Vipul Bansal, he's equally enthusiastic and his enthusiasm is youthful enthusiasm. He's bubbly with excitement. Every time I do a meeting with Vipul, He's a man in a hurry to perform, man in a hurry to do more. And that's what really I like most about him. In the lift, I was telling him he sent in a file that he probably wants to try for a position in some international organization. I've threatened him I'm going to reject that. There's no way I'm going to let you go. All the distinguished uh, members of the ECGC family, captains of industry, exporters from different fields, friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, I think I owe it to Senthil Nathan to felicitate him. I'm sure it's a matter of great joy for all of us as we see the new India unfurling before us. Some of you may have had a chance to visit Vanijya Bhavan. Vipul just mentioned it. Vanijya Bhavan also 
is just the beginning of how Indian government is going to look like across ministries in Delhi. In fact, uh, this was started in 2018, Vanija Bhavan project, completed last year. Most of the work happened during COVID. And I can tell you, I've had visitors from all across the world and very senior ministers, prime ministers, that level of visitors from different countries coming over there. And everybody is amazed when they see Vanija Bhavan. They, they just can't believe this is Indian government working from a premises as modern, yet architecturally very connected with India, with a stone facade and large workspaces, very efficient, totally digitalized building. And that is the film used to be that way. But finally I realized it's to hide the chair. Otherwise the chair is in such bad shape. Tables run down, huge amount of folders, cardboard bag, tons of papers with a string tying them. And I don't know if you've noticed, ministers used to get those brown boxes with tons of files, which used to move with the minister if he had not cleared the files, or with the secretaries. And ghar ja rahe hai, wapis aare hai, bade bade dabbe bada, a colonial system chalta tha pura. Saath mein teen ladke, bade dabbe leke aare hai, full of files. Prime Minister Modi has given us this big vision for India at 100. As we are celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatsav, 75 years of India's independence, we'll have to think afresh what kind of a country are we going to evolve into in the next 25 years? What are we going to leave behind for the children? What legacy are we going to leave behind? What culture are we going to leave behind? Are they going to inherit what we inherited maybe 25, 30 years ago? Or are we going to give them a modern contemporary India with which the youth of India can relate, which can give them the confidence and the pride in their nation, which India truly, richly deserves? And therefore, when Prime Minister Modi speaks about Panch Pran, I'm sure many of you, if not most of you, if not all of you, are now aware of the Panch Pran that he articulated on 15th August from the ramparts of the Red Fort, where he spoke about India becoming a developed nation by 2047 when we celebrate 100 years of independence. And he spoke about four other commitments that we all make collectively a commitment to unshackle ourselves from our colonial past, remove all the vintage, all the rem remembrances or re reminders of colonialism which has kept this country backward, which has kept our thinking backward for so many years, probably so many centuries. He also, in that same vein, spoke, spoke about going back to our roots, our rich culture, our rich tradition, our rich heritage, from which we have a lot to learn, a lot to be proud about. We got a reflection of that in the uh, dance performance, the cultural performance, Ganesh Vandana. with which we rightfully started this program. And that respect that comes out of our culture, our family value systems, our traditions, is something which will hold us in good stead 
as we are progressing towards a developed country. The fourth point he spoke about was the unity and integrity of India, which we all cherish very deeply. The fact that we are one nation, we are all one family. In fact, India goes even beyond that. When in G20 we talk of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world as one family. And clearly, if we all stay united, we all stay committed to making India a developed nation, and we all work with a sense of duty, the fifth prana, kartavya bhavna. If we all desire to make India a developed nation, and are willing to pursue our dreams, our ambitions, with a sense of duty, unshackling ourselves from the past, colonial heritage, yet rooting ourselves deeply in rich Indian tradition and culture, staying united as one nation, there's absolutely no power on earth that can stop India from its rightful place in the committee of nations as a developed nation, as a prosperous nation, where 140 crore Indians will enjoy the fruits of India's prosperity. And today, ECGC is joining the ranks of reflecting its true value systems, its true culture, its abilities, and showcasing to the world that ECGC can and will work for all of the things that are written above us to empower your enterprises expansion, to encourage exchange of business ideas, promote your ideas beyond boundaries, secure your business ambitions, all of the things that are written, instituting a healthy business environment, all of these goals that they have set for themselves are reflected today in this building that we have all joined to celebrate the inauguration of and celebrate the new India, the new India of 140 crore dreams, the new India which today the world recognizes as a global power. The world today is looking up to India as the bright spot in an otherwise very gloomy atmosphere. The new India, which today contributes hugely to global growth, the new India, which is the fastest growing economy amongst the large economies in the world, and will continue to be so for several decades, if not for the rest of the century. The new India, which has huge managerial talent, which has capabilities beyond imagination, which has a youthful population, our demographic dividend, which makes us so proud. New India, where every young child is aspiring for a better quality of life. A new India where we believe we will have to look at greater degree of international engagement because no country in the world, friends, has become a developed nation without engaging in a big way in international trade. It could be import, it could be export. We'll have to build up that culture of uh, an economy, of an ecosystem, which can work with the best in the world from a position of strength, with full self-confidence. And that is the new India of our dreams, about which Saktivel also mentioned when he said, we have achieved a record last year. We were hoping to do $400 billion of merchandise exports. We went up to $422 billion. We were hoping initially to do $200 billion 25 billion of service export. Along the way, we realized we could go up to 250 billion. 
we landed up with 254 billion of service exports, collectively crossing $650 billion. Friends, we are in our 75th year of independence. And yesterday at the Raisina Dialogue, and a dialogue which brought world leaders on one stage in Delhi, I was asked this question of what is India's export expected to look like this year? And I thought to myself that in this 75th year of independence, it is most appropriate that we should cross $750 billion this year. And given the huge work that all of you are doing and the support that ECGC is giving to all our export activities, with great responsibility and confidence, I am happy to share with you that figures until February 2023, that's 11 months, are already in excess of what we did in the whole of last year. And we will certainly close this year well in excess of $750 billion, another all-time historical record. <laughs> Friends, ECGC has also evolved. If I may, with due apologies to you, sir, and to the organization, share my own experiences of the ECGC of the past. And we have a lot to learn from history. We must, we must not mind when we talk about the past. We should learn from the past. In fact, uh, when I was made Commerce and Industry Minister, the first thought that came to my mind was, There's media in the room. I don't know whether I can even describe the whole experience. But samajne wale samaj jayenge aur business wale jo is room mein baithe hain wo to zarur samaj jayenge. The first time I went to Udyog Bhavan, which used to be Commerce Industries office before Vanijya Bhavan. First time I went to Udyog Bhavan was in the 90s, early 90s. I think it must have been 91, 92 or thereabouts. So nearly 30 odd years ago. I said, I was in my factory was in Mumbai. It was a small scale unit which I had started. And I don't mind sharing with you. I started it with a very small capital. 19 lakh 80,000 was the cost of the project when I started my life. I was only 18 or 19 at that time. And I had come right next door to see to the MIDC office. Is it somewhere here, right? Chakala? Yeah. I've shared it with friends before, so if I, somebody is hearing it again, please don't mind it. I had to do over 90 trips. Nine zero. 90 times I had to come to MIDC Chakala to get a plot of land allotted of 2,000 930 square meters, less than one acre. Of course, my first trip to Bola Koi Zamini Nahi Amare Pas. Ma se karte karte, jobi karna parte hai, kirit bhai, wo sab kuch kiya. Jake finally land bhi mil gaya, land nikal bhi gaya, kidar se nikla bhagwan jane, a lot bhi ho gaya, register bhi ho, but 93 times mujhe jate gaya da ya, 94 times. मैंने चक धक्के खाए थे यहाँ पे ऐसे ही उद्योग भवन में पहली बार गया था क्योंकि वहाँ इंडियन बॉयलर रेगुलेशन का रेगुलेटर का ऑफिस होता था आईबीआर एंड इफ यू नीडेड टू गेट परमिशन एस अ वेल नोन फूड शॉप यू नीडेड टू बी इंस्पेक्टेड बाय द चीफ बॉयलर इंस्पेक्टर इफ आई रिमेम्बर द नेम करेक्टली और अपॉइंटमेंट ही नहीं दे हमारे एक्सपोर्ट सटक गए थे ये इससे बता रहा हूँ क्योंकि वो भी एक्सपोर्ट से लिंक था आई ऑल माय एक्सपोर्ट प्रोडक्ट्स यूज्ड टू बी कम आउट ऑफ फर्नेसेस बीइंग फर्नेस इट कैम केम इन द कैटेगरी ऑफ बॉयलर यूजिंग फर्नेस ऑयल 
and therefore it required a visit from the chief boiler inspector. Worley office was not empowered to give the well-known food shop approval. So we went to Delhi to try and get an appointment to, for him to come here. The rest, for at least those who are in business, I don't need to describe or explain. But that was a shock for a person at that young age to experience. But then you learn the hard way. And I was mentioning all this in the context of my own experience with ECGC, where I had some default in one of the export consignments or export orders. Somebody had defaulted. Fortunately, amount was not very big, but I was a little idealistic in those days. I thought, Amara Adhikar hai, hum sa, itna premium pay karte hai ECGC ko har bar. So, humne bhi application dal di for getting a claim. Kafi kuch patra vevar kiya, letters went up and down. Then I realized that isse kaam nahi chalega. Then I went to their office in uh, Nariman Point, but I don't recall which of your offices. Who would have been? 90s mein kaun sa office tha aapka? Express tha wazi tha. Tha, udar hi gaya hunga bhi, itna yaad nahi hai mujhe abhi. वहाँ पे भी धक्के खा लिए बहुत कोशिश कर ली ये पेपर लाओ वो पेपर लाओ अब असली पेपर क्या लाना हो मुझे समझ ही नहीं आ रहा था and finally I gave up I don't know if you keep records that old but we could probably locate that record I gave up that claim I thought it's easier not to go down that path but rather to give it up I'm sharing this with all of you because that's not the India that we want to live in and we want to leave for our children here. We want to leave them an India which is completely corruption free. And whoever it may be, we'll have to be unsparing in our action against all those who indulge in any regular activities. If we want to be a developed nation, if we are really looking to make India a superpower, if we really want to engage with the rest of the world, then collectively, all of us will have to take a call and make a decision that we want the new India to be with high degree of integrity and it's a collective endeavor of both of us. People in industry, exporters, Government, bodies like ECGC, Exim Bank, all the others, including our export promotion councils, or few, we are all in it together. Koi bhi kadi kharab hogi, the chain will spoil, the link will be broken. We in ECGC should be very conscious of tracking what is happening. Transparency in our working, ease in operation, be helpful in our approach, convert as much as you can into online operations. In fact, if I was in your place, I would ban the entry of any exporter into any ECGC office. The moment you can do that, then I can hopefully close all your branch offices and run the entire show from a lean and mean organization at the head office, running online, you need to talk to any exporter, do a VC with him. Record that VC. Have no interface with exporters at all. Completely transparent operations. Digitize it. Trust the exporter. Unless you have reasons not to trust somebody. And that pattern can be found out through artificial intelligence, through the track record. That can be quite easily figured out and judged. There are intelligent ways. After all, Bajaj Finance and all these successful MBFCs who are working at international class levels, they don't sit and do as much paperwork and as many uh, offices as we have. 
and I would urge ECGC to relook at all your processes, engage with exporters, and I would urge Indian industry to make up your mind that come what may, you will not allow any irregular operations in the ministries. In the center, I can assure you, Government of India, there's absolutely no question of anybody wanting to do anything irregular. And if anybody does, we want you to become whistleblowers. We want you to talk about it. We want you to raise your voice. And in any organization that comes under us, we want you to help us completely clean up India's story to make it truly a story which the world <coughs> should envy. And <coughs> I think ECGC can do that. I must compliment ECGC for some of the innovative things that they've done. They've introduced a policy where exporters with credit limits up to 20 crores are covered up to 90% of their losses. It's for the first time. Earlier it used to be 60%, I think. 90% of the losses. I think you transparently now put out all the claims, pending claims, all of that data is all online. We will make it absolutely transparent. And we'd urge all of you also to take the benefit of the new way of working, the new schemes that ECGC is coming out with, on this happy occasion of this beautiful building, and truly world class, I mean, this building, this atrium, this sky lobby, what's it called? Sky? Skyline. It's all truly something that can make each one of us proud, each one of us who are stakeholders with this organization. And on this happy occasion, with your permission, can I request you, Mr. Santil Nathan, that this 20 crore limit, move it to 40 crore and you'll be able to cover a far more number of people. So do your necessary board approvals or whatever it takes. And at the earliest, if you can move this 20 crore to all exporters who export, and this will almost cover all the MSME sector then. 40 crore export limits. You can have other limits, we don't mind. Export limit only, you see, right? Somebody can have more than 40 crore overall limit, but export limits, whoever has up to 40 crores, will try to cover them up to 90%, save and except one or two sectors, I think. Yeah, one or two, uh, this is for? Which sectors? Ah, you look gali denge samne bete. Gems and jewelry and commodities are two sectors which are not yet under this expanded uh, regime. But if they prove their metal, if they, if they follow some of the advice I've been giving them for a long time, then I think maybe at some time we can look at covering them also. But uh, other sectors, engineering and agricultural produce, textiles, pharmaceuticals, all of you will be covered 90% for any potential risk or loss on the condition that you will reciprocate by ensuring full honesty and integrity in claims and in the way we work with ECGC. I've also asked them to call a meeting with all the bank uh, senior officials so that I can talk to them about the interest rate structure that will be charged by the banks for all those who are getting up to 90% cover. So that gives the banks a great safety net and makes your loan a, a, a double A rated loan, if I remember correctly. It becomes a double A rated loan when 90% of the risk is covered by CGC. So I hopefully, State Bank has reduced their interest rates. Four banks have have reduced their interest rates for all those who get a cover up to 90%. We'll try to do the same thing for with the other banks. And gradually, we want all of you to start enjoying the fruits of working with ECGC. We want more exports to, be, to enjoy these benefits. 
we are currently covering about between 22 to 25 percent of our merchandise exports. I think we should aim to go up the ladder and go up to about 50 percent at least, so that almost all the MSMEs can start taking advantage of your schemes and the lower interest rate that they can enjoy with that. Large exporters very often may take a call or not to join the ECGC bandwagon, or some of them may be having their own self-insurance mechanism. I don't know uh, how it works, but uh, I would encourage more participants to enjoy the various schemes and offerings of ECGC. I would urge ECGC to see what more we can do to promote exports, how we can, with these fresh new beginnings, come up with new ideas and become an important stakeholder in India's journey at the first step to take our exports to $2 trillion by 2030, a trillion dollars of services and a trillion dollars of goods that I believe we can and we must achieve by 2030. And then we can set other goals for the future, aligning ourselves with the goal of a developed India, an India which will boast one of the largest GDPs anywhere in the world, an India that will truly once again become a Vishwa Guru, a global power. And I am very confident that each one of my friends sitting before me, the stakeholders of ECGC and export ecosystem, will be a great beneficiary and will enjoy the fruits of prosperity. As India prospers, as Indian businesses prosper, as Indian people prosper, I think the world will prosper. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, sir, for those words of wisdom that will truly help us revitalize our resolve in serving the community better. Thank you once again, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, with this absolutely beautiful crescendo, we have come to the tail end of the ceremony. I would now request Sri Sunil Joshi ji, Executive Director, ECGC, to please come forward to deliver the vote of thanks. Let's give a warm welcome to him, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor and privilege to have Sri Piyush Goelji, the Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, and Textiles to inaugurate the new headquarters of ECGC. ECGC Bhavan is an embodiment of the aspiration of its past and present employees and the confidence shown by the Government of India in the company's mission to promote exports, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to the Honorable Minister for presiding over the inauguration ceremony despite his busy schedule. Sir, with your kind words of encouragement, guidance, and leadership will motivate us to achieve new frontiers of success. Our most sincere thanks are due to Sri Vipul Bansal, Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce, and Dr. A. Shaktiwal, President of the Federation of Indian Export Organizations, for gracing the occasion. We at ECGC recognize the stakeholders' increased expectations arising out of rising complexities in international trade, Sir, with your continued guidance and support, we are certain to provide the exporters and banks with the much needed anchor in terms of improved risk management and mitigation. In the most difficult of times, ECGC has stood firmly behind its policyholders, providing the necessary support and confidence. We are happy to see the presence of our distinguished exporters and bankers here today. Our sincere gratitude to you for joining us 
on this momentous occasion. We are very grateful to you, uh, also to our directors for attending today's function and providing encouragement to us. We would also like to thank officials of the central government, the state government, the BMC, the CPWD, our architects and the builders who are all present here today. Over the past 65 years, ECGC has established itself as an organization recognized nationally and globally with its reach across export centers all over the country and engagement with its counterparts and multilateral financial institutions. This feat could be achieved through the diligent efforts of the employees of the organization, both past and present. We would like to express our sincere thanks to our retired and serving colleagues whose contribution to the company's growth has been vital in creating a name for the organization in the business of export credit insurance. I'd like to quote Ruskin from his book, The Stones of Venice. I quote, we require from buildings two kinds of goodness. First, the doing their practical duty well, then that they be graceful and pleasing in doing it, unquote. I'm sure this majestic building will be a graceful landmark of this location. It will also be a landmark of our commitment and excellence in export credit insurance services. I would like to conclude by thank thanking all of you once again for making this gr event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much, dignitaries, for joining us. Also, I would like to thank all the members of the audience for joining us for this beautiful ceremony. And I also request all of you to please join us for high tea at the rear lobby on the first floor. Once again, let's have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our dignitaries.